Greetings, one and all two universes! In this show, we will analyze the stats, weapons, and abilities of two fighters to see who would win in a battle to the death. Many people have predicted the outcome, so let's see who guessed right and who guessed wrong. And be sure to stay tuned after the episode so you can see the next fighters and make your predictions down in the comments section below. And who knows, your comment or video response could be featured in the very next episode. So, let's meet our two fighters, Aang, the Avatar and Master of the Elements, and Jack, Manipulator and Master of Eco, Nature's Energy. Which one of these two environmentally powered heroes will win in a battle to the death? This is Universes. Water, Earth, Fire, Air. Only one can master all four of the elements. That one is called the Avatar. <coughs> and the one we're looking at today is a bald kid named Aang. <laughs> Now, Aang didn't want to be Avatar at first. In his mind, it was too much responsibility for him. So out of fear of letting everyone down, he ran away. Unfortunately for him, he got trapped in an iceberg and, well, let everyone down. The Fire Nation grew in power over the time span of 100 years while Aang was frozen. But Aang was eventually released by Katara and her brother Sokka. Aang soon realized the gigantic mistake he had made in abandoning his position as Avatar, and immediately began his journey around the world to master all four elements and defeat Fire Lord Ozai. So everyone knows all four elements that can be controlled by Aang, but let's go more in depth about what each of them can do. First, let's begin with his main and most obvious elemental ability. Air. With his air bending abilities, Aang is able to fly with his glider. This combined with his lightweight body makes him very agile and an expert at dodging in combat. He can ride on spheres made of air or create winds strong enough to blow fully grown humans backwards, which typically weigh over 150 pounds. Water bending is exactly how it sounds. He can freeze and thaw water at will and get it to do anything he wishes. With earth bending, Aang can control the very materials of the ground. Stone, sand, you name it. Toph Beifang even taught him a cool technique to locate anything without vision by sensing the vibrations on the earth. Next up is fire bending. Aang can create gigantic scorching flames or even redirect and manipulate lightning. Oh, and one more thing. Aang also has the ability to energy bend. With it, he can give or take away powers to and from anyone he chooses with a simple tap on the forehead. All of these powers get massive upgrades as well once Aang enters the Avatar state. He connects with the Avatar Cycle to gain all the knowledge and experience of all the other Avatars in the past combined. In this state, Aang's airbending becomes strong enough to surround himself in a gigantic defensive sphere of air that can casually smash through small mountains. His earthbending becomes strong enough to move an entire city. His waterbending becomes strong enough to take the form of a gigantic beast that can slice down warships. And his firebending becomes strong enough to shoot in giant waves out of his mouth and limbs. But all this intense power comes with a hefty price. Not only is Aang still a human, but a human child, and as such is a bit of a glass cannon. He tires quite easily after taking damage and using the Avatar state, so he has to rely on his dodging capabilities to survive in battle. But, thanks to the fact that he's quick enough to redirect lightning, I think he's cool. With all those cool bending powers, I'm sure the small sacrifice of a high defense is more than worth it. When the Fire Nation attacked, the world couldn't have asked for a better Avatar than Aang. Now let's see what his opponent Jack has in store for him. Snake in your sleeping bag. Ah! Get it off! Get it off! Ah! <laughs> Great, you're awake. Let's go. <laughs> oh, prepare for this bumpy ride. Okay, so Jack was like this little kid in the future, but he was sent back to the past to grow up safely there, so he could come back and save the future. And. You know, that sounded a lot more complex in my mind. Anyways, it's the stuff in between where it gets interesting. Okay, I swear, 
That's the last time I ever, ever touch any stupid precursor crap! You see, Jack's world is filled with a natural energy source called Eco. It's color-coded with different uses and abilities for each type. Many foes would like to get their hands on it for their evil purposes. Especially when it comes to Dark Eco, which Jack was pumped full of for two years. While it would have killed any normal person, Jack actually has the ability to harness Eco for his own purposes. He uses it to keep peace, or at least attempt to keep peace, in Haven City. So now you can hold on to your seats and prepare for this bumpy ride, because when it comes to Eco, we have a lot to cover. Aside from Light and Dark Eco, which we'll get to later, there are four main types. Red Eco doubles Jack's strength, and Blue Eco allows Jack to become twice as fast and reflect projectiles with a spin. Yellow Eco allows Jack to fire projectiles from his hands that can even home in on enemies. And Green Eco can be used to recover Jack's health by either absorbing it directly or by landing melee attacks on foes with the Life Siphon. When Jack absorbs Dark or Light Eco, he transforms and comes packed with all new abilities. Dark Jack is completely invincible as long as he stays in this form. He can grow in size and even create shockwaves by slamming into the ground. Light Jack can fly, generate shields, recover his health completely, and even greatly slow down time. However, all of Jack's Eco is limited and can run out at any time. Luckily, if that happens, he still has a fancy weapon called the Morph Gun. It can take the form of a sniper, a shotgun, a minigun with homing projectiles, a grenade launcher, an anti-gravity gun, and a mini-nuke? Good grief! Where does he carry all that ammo? With all of his eco powers, Jack has been able to destroy tons of precursor technology, the most advanced in his universe. Heck, he was powerful enough to even destroy a gigantic mechanical beast that remained fully functional after tanking a fall from space. Not only that, but he then tanked the explosion of the robot's defeat. Either that or he teleported to the ground, which isn't very likely. Many of these foes didn't even require him to use eco powers, his weapons were strong enough to get the job done. For example, Jack once dodged a point-blank laser shot from Zig without the need for the speed-enhancing blue eco. Jack has defeated many foes, destroyed tons of enemy machines, and has battled his way through giant waves of enemies, all while escorting people and keeping them safe the entire time. I mean, I'd certainly believe you if you told me this guy was the legendary Mar. But let's see which legendary legend will be more legendary in this legendary battle of legends. That's a lot of legends. Let's take a look at your predictions while I calculate the results. Wow! Put it on ice, big guy! Corn O'Keefe here, guys, bringing you my prediction for Leopold the Brave's next universes. As you can see, Aang versus Jack. You know, Jack's pretty awesome. He has a few different weapons. He has Light Jack, Dark Jack. He's pretty powerful, but I'm going to have to go with Aang for the simple fact he is the master of the elements, okay? His avatar form is pretty potent and pretty powerful. He's pretty skillful all around. Um, that's just my opinion and thoughts on that. Shouts out. Corn will keep out. Peace. Uh, hey guys, Brandon Gaming VA here for another uh, Universes prediction video. Today is uh, Jack from Jack and Daxter versus Aang from Avatar: The Last Airbender, and uh, today we've got Rivet Theater joining us. Hello. And we've both come to the consensus that Jack is gonna win. Yeah. Pretty sure Jack is gonna win this. So what are your like? Uh, why do you think Jack wins? Uh, well, first of all, from what I've heard of Aang, like, he, he isn't all that durable in terms of what he can actually take. Uh, and I think Jack can, like, dish out enough to actually, like, kill Aang and put him in states where he's, like, where he can't really fight and I'm pretty sure Jack is strong enough to lose. No, <clears throat> I've actually seen all of, uh, The Last Airbender, and yeah, Aang is... Not shown to be that durable, he usually is dodging, better more dodging attacks. Which I think, he could do that for a pretty a good amount of a fight, but Jack's Supernova would probably just one-shot Aang. And his light form, which can control time, will not give Aang a chance to like dodge stuff. Yeah, um, another thing is that, um, something that my hinder Jack in the slightest is that he won't have Daxter with him, from what I can tell, but Daxter doesn't really help all that much, so I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem, really. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, Aang might have some, like, 
minor advantages in some categories like speed, but then with Jack's um colored e colored eco, he can he has the advantage in many different in those categories he didn't have. Yeah, the morph gun also like might give him like a versatility advantage over Ang, uh, with like the amount of things that it can transform into. And I don't think Ang's like energy bending is gonna be able to do much because. Yeah. One, you don't think he can? I don't think he can take away multiple different elements, so he'd only be taking away one or one or at most two forms of eco control. Plus, yeah. I don't think he could take. I don't think he could take away stuff like uh, the dark or light forms, because like bending in his universe is kind of self-taught, like the four main colored ones. But dark and light jack are in him, so that's. I don't think he can do that. Yeah, that yeah, I can definitely see that. Uh, I, um, is eco like a type of element? Yeah, basically. Uh, yeah, but uh, Ang has never like actually like seen eco before, so he wouldn't actually know how to like get rid of it. Right? Yeah, that's true. Plus, I feel like Jack at this point has fought people with the same type of attacks like Ang. Yeah, I, I think um. Another thing is that, like, Jack has got, like, um, his eco, every single, like, type will give him, like, an advantage over Jack, depending on what the type of eco is. Like, uh, durability, speed, strength, like, the stuff that, like, boosts him and stuff. Like, even if Aang did have an advantage, it would kind of, like, it would make sure that he would have the advantage. Yeah. In I just feel like, yeah, Jack's different weapons and his different eco is what make the fight kind of unfair for Aang. Like, yeah. I feel like, okay, Jack's gonna have a tough time, like, actually hitting Aang, because Aang is extremely fast and extremely, like, mobile. He can fly around and do a bunch of stuff. Yeah, but I think just one supernova and Aang's kind of down for the count. If not supernova, then light form stopping time is what's gonna <coughs> do him in. Yeah. Yeah. So alright, I think that's a uh, pretty good uh, opinion on Leopold the Brave's Jack vs. Aang. So, uh, later. Alright, see ya. And the results are in. The winner is... Well, I should have held my tongue last episode because this one is the new closest episode in terms of fan predictions. By the way, a little tip for all those who want their predictions to be in the episodes easier. I enjoy creativity, collab predictions with friends, or maybe a cool format. Just have fun with your predictions. Anyways, let's get on to the results. Now let's go over Aang's one advantage first, and that's attack potency. In the Avatar state, Aang can casually smash through small mountains while it takes Jack several shots to take down a mountain-sized boss. But not only does Aang lose in every other category, he loses badly. Jack is at least twice as fast as Aang as he casually dodged a point-blank laser shot, and the speed-enhancing Blue Eco would make that difference even greater. Plus, with Blue Eco's ability to help Jack reflect projectiles with a spin, he'd easily be able to negate some of Aang's bending, like boulders from airbending or fireballs from firebending. While Jack's raw strength may not be as high as Aang's, it's certainly much higher than his durability. Like I said in his analysis, Aang is a very clear glass cannon and can be taken down easily. Azula even brought him down in the Avatar state because he wasn't the defending himself with that giant air sphere. Many of Jack's weapons and attacks would be able to deal heavy damage to Aang, and things like the Supernova and Dark Blast may even be able to one-shot him. Jack is so much tougher, and not to mention he can heal as well. Now I know you all have one question. Jack relies on his eco, right? So wouldn't Aang be able to strip Jack of his eco manipulation powers? And the answer to that is yes, he could. But would that help him win? Absolutely not. For one, Jack would still have all his weapons which don't require eco manipulation, and like I said before, most of them are strong enough to deal heavy damage to Aang in a single shot. Besides, it's not like Aang would ever get the chance to energy bend Jack anyways considering his massive speed advantage. There's also the fact that he can slow down time. True that both have a gigantic variety among their arsenal, but Jack has a gigantic variety among his arsenal's properties. Aang can use water, earth, fire, and air, but that's all they are, water, earth, fire, and air. Meanwhile, all of Jack's different types of eco can be used for many different purposes. Aang's power alone isn't enough to bring down Jack when he has shields, healing, and complete invincibility in his dark form. Sorry, Aang, but in a fight, I'd let Jack have my back. 
The winner is Jack. Get ready for the next battle.